Uh, dear students, a warm welcome to VTU e Sectiona program. As we have seen about the relaxation procedure in the last video, we are going to continue the same in this current video. So, as we wish to send feedback the B dash data to the LX in order to find the value. So, in order to improvise the accuracy of recall. So, we may do some by using the weight matrix, the transverse of weight matrix WT. In this reverse chain of the activity transmission from L of Y to L of X. As we are aware about that, we are going to do from the reverse process from y of x to f of x. So, such a way we are going to do this reverse process. So, which is going to be done to improvise the accuracy of the recalls. So, we may do about this transverse is going to be taken over there in the reverse chain activity and the transmission is going to be taken care of from y to x. So, that what happened? The B dash of transfers with the weight matrix transfers which is going to tend to yeah, A double dash, A double dash. Here the A double dash can be then fed forward through the weight matrix to become B double dash which is going to be transferred into B double dash. As we come across about that A double dash transfers with the weight matrix W which is going to be tends to produce the B double dash value. Continuing this bidirectional pro a process of a process which generates a sequence vector pairs, which is going to generate a sequence vector pairs. Okay. Such a way we are going to create the generate pair, uh, vector pairs as like that which is going to get process over there. Understood? So, a bidirectional relaxation process eventually leading to a bidirectional equilibrium. So, that equilibrium condition is going to be shown over there here as B transfers of F with W transfers tends to A transfers. So, this arrow specifies or signifies a thresholding operation using the neuron signal function. Okay, This is going to be a neuron signal function which is going to provide the thresholding operation, which is going to signify the thresholding operation. What is then uh, desired is that the sequence converges a vertical pair of A i comma B i, yes, which is one of the closest to programmed memories of the system. Basically what happened, the bidirectional associate memory tends a off field style unidirectional auto associative decoding to the bidirectional cases. So, if you observe carefully the BAM, the bidirectional associative memories are closely related to the half field model in the following fashion. So, argumenting of these two layers of BAM architecture into a single layer heals an architecture similar to that of an off-fill network and the resulting connection matrix as a zero block diagonal forms which is a special case of an off-fill connection matrix. Okay. So, understand about that through a sequence of forward and reverse transmissions we are going to do the process of this particular relaxation procedure and a bidirectional relaxation procedure eventually leading to a bidirectional equilibrium state. Got it? Let me discuss about the next one signal update or under a forward pass, signal update under a forward pass which is going to be called as formalizing the model. This is going to be called as a formalizing the model. We now formalize this bidirectional update procedure. So, the neurons which are going to be there in the BAM layer of LX and LY which are going to update their states depending upon their activity levels either synchronous, asynchronously or subsequent asynchronously it is going to do the process. So, 
the layers which have been activated or the layer activations are then recomputed over there and subsets may be chosen at a random or they may be well defined in advance. So, the usual procedure which are going to be get the update procedure is going to be always a synchronous one. Let me assume the x and y which denotes the neural activations of x of i and y of j, x of i and y of j which denotes the neural activations, neural activations and let we can take A of i and B of j, A of i and B of j which denotes the corresponding neural signal values in the layer of Lx and Ly, in the layer of Lx and Ly respectively, respectively then at the iteration, at the kth iteration, the forward direction, the forward direction of Lx to Ly, Lx to Ly which is going to specify the value as y of j at the kth iteration, iteration is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to n with weight matrix of this particular data that is going to be dealt over here for the moment. So, in this synchronous update all neurons are going to be updated together and in subset asynchronous update the neuron field is going to be divided, divided into two subsets of the neurons. So, that subsets are selected at random and the neuron within a subset are going to be updated simultaneously as well as synchronously it is going to do that one. So, that the L of y, the L of y activations are threshold in accordance with the signal function. So, which is going to generate the bipolar signal on the f of y neurons. Okay. So, as we are aware about that the signal function is going to be defined for both binary as well as bipolar operations. So, we are going to take the three conditions over there as 1, 0, minus 1 and b to the power of k minus 1. So, whenever this is going to be there, the conditions have been applied over there. If the i, if y j of k is going to be greater than 0 or less than 0 or equal to 0. These are the three conditions which are going to be applicable when it is going to be a binary, when it is going to be a binary of 0 or minus 1. So, in the reverse direction, in the reverse direction what happened? In the reverse direction the computation, the computation activations which is going to be created from Ly tends to Lx is going to be this value. Okay. So, as already we are aware about that y of k is equal to summation of i to 1 to n weight matrix of ij of a i comma a i to the power of k for l x to l y. Here a reverse is going to be there. So, we have already as we have considered about the three parameters x, y, a, b and l x and l y. We are going to take the consideration from l y to l x. So, this x i k to the power of k k plus 1 is equal to summation of j to 1 to m makes the variation as like this. So, this parameters we have to observe over here. Understand? Here the Lx activations are thresholded in accordance with the signal function. As a signal function is going to be taken considered over there, ai k to the ai to the power of k plus 1 is equal to, we are going to take the same condition, it may be plus 1 binary values of 0 or minus 1 and again the value is going to be k i of to the power of k. And for the binary values which is going to satisfy the condition over there if it is going to be less greater than 0 or e less than 0 or equal to 0. Note that the iterations, the iteration time increments only once in 
a complete forward reverse cycle of updates. Okay? The iteration time is going to be increments only once in a complete forward reverse cycle of this update. So, the neuron continues to update these states until a bidirectional state equilibrium is going to be get achieved. That is nothing but AF comma BF which is going to be get achieved. That state has to be get achieved over there. Until that this bidirectional stable equilibrium which is going to update the neurons in all the states. Understand? Such a way it is going to do the updation of that one. Moving on to the next topic, encoding associations into a BIM system. We studied that the case of encoding vectors into an auto associators using an outer product encoding. We wish to continue with the encode of Q binary associations into a bidirectional uh, bidirectional associations memory system. So, just you can recall from our past discussions on an associative memory that such an associations can be programmed into a weights using a HEPS learning rule and by simultaneously or subsequently superimposing the individual action, uh, actions associations matrix, okay, individual association matrix. As we are going to aware about that by using a bipolar outer product encoding, the programs are going to be an hetero associative. So, that we are going to use a HEPS learning embedded law and with the HEPS learning embedded law, we are going to take the value of this time t is equal to, we are going to identify this value, the weight matrix W is equal to summation of k is equal to 1 to q. We are going to take the value of q. Why? What is the value of q over here? The q value is nothing but already we have taken that encoded q binary associations, which is going to give a value of x of k and y of k transverse. So, these parameters are going to be called as bipolar. These are going to be called as bipolar values, where x of k is equal to, we can assume some of the value over there x k is equal to, we can assume x k value is equal to 2 a k minus 1 whereas y k is equal to 2 b k minus 1. So, we are going to take these two values are bipolar equivalence of a k and b k, a k and b k. The associatives are going to be taken over there. So, the diagonal is not 0 out in a BAM connection matrix as it is done in the as like in the Hopfield camps. Okay. So, we have seen that the bipolar encoding builds in a natural correction capability into the memory. Also, we are going to assume that uh, we can observe that the binary pattern ignores the information. For example, in binary pattern, we are going to make that 1 plus 0 is equal to 1, correct or not? So, we are going to ignore such kind of uh, binary pattern informations. But in binary patterns, if I am going to take one more value as uh, for example, one plus of minus one is equal to one plus of minus one is equal to zero. Correct. So in this case, it cannot able to be get ignored over there. So, the binary encoding generates only an executory connections or connectivities over there, which is going to be called as a positive weight and no connectivity will be there. There is no zero weight over there. So, the bipolar encoding can be generate synaptic strength which are positive. It may be zero or negative, okay, which are positive or zero or negative. This bipolar encoding generates the synaptic strength during those times that has to be considered over there. As uh, association AI comma BI can be looked upon a logical statement if AI then BI bidirectionally implies that if BI then AI. 
that is going to make it possible. So, the logical relationship between Ai and Bi is thus a bidirectional implic implications and the vector analog of a symmetric relation is going to be correlation. Since the outer product generates the correlations to derive the weight matrix of a yeah, bidirectional associative memory system, we, we superimpose the particular Q correlation matrices into this particular stream. Got it? So, we will move on to the next topic, operational summary of this particular uh, BAM algorithm, operational summary. So, if you are going to see about this table which is going to give, it is going to summarize the operation of this bidirectional associative memory model. In this bidirectional associative memory model algorithm, the activations and signals are going to be updated synchronously only the layer at one time, only layer at a time. The first layer Lx and then the layer Ly, Lx and Ly, okay. So as mentioned, one complete update in both layer increments the time index once. Unlike the half uh, fold network that can display two kinds of behavior, the fixed attractions and limit cycle behavior. So the BAM always converges to a bidirectional attractions, a bidirectional fixed point attractors. So that we prove this uh, formally, uh, in a usual operation of this BAM, it is more advantageous to employ bipolar encoding, bipolar decoding due to its inherent error correction capability, which, which is going to be as uh, discussed with the half field network. So, this error correction capability in this context of BAM in the bipolar decoding is made explicit in the algorithm presentation. Okay. Let me see about the table, how the table has been given over here. A given data which have been given over there, a set of binary vector pairs we have to encode into this BAM by using a bipolar encoding and decoding, bipolar encoding and decoding. Then we have to encode the value as already we have identified, already we have calculated the value of weight matrix W as we have come across over the weight matrix W is equal to summation of k is equal to 1 to q as the xk and yk transpose. So, the transpose value is going to be considered over there, that is going to be get encoded over here. And we have to initialize the signal vector to a probe vector, we have to convert the signal vector into probe vector. So, we are going to take the Lx value, so set up Lx signal vector to a probe vector and we have to select the randomized signal vector on the field of L Ly and we need to set the index, time index k is equal to 0. We have to set the time index k is equal to 0. Then we have to start the iteration. We have to compute the activations. We have to compute the activations. Once it is going to get computed, obviously we have to update the neurons, update the neurons in accordance with the signal function, how we have been identified over there. Either it may be greater than 0 or less than 0 or it may be equal to 0 for the binary value of 0 and minus 1. And as we discussed about that value of 0 does not have a meaning over there, so we are going to take minus 1 value alone over here. As like that, we are going to make increment the time k is equal to k plus 1. And again the computation is going to be computed for the activations of fx. And we have to update the neurons which are going to be there in the fx for the reverse direction with the occurrence with the signal function. And here also we are going to compute the value when the x value is going to be greater than 0 or less than 0 or equal to 0 until, until it has to satisfy the equilibrium state, thermally equilibrium state such a way it has to be get present over there. This is nothing but the operational summary of BAM, the operational summary of the BAM. Moving on to the MATLAB, synchronization updates are going to be studied with the MATLAB code. 
So the synchronous update signals, the synchronous update algorithm is easily implemented in a MATLAB and the code for this is going to be presented over here which have been representing this particular slide. The vectors of to be stored in a memory vector x and memory vector y and the first converted to their respective bipolar forms. Okay. So these are encoded into a weight matrix of WT and a probe vector is going to be set across LX and LY. The signals and randomized over there. Signals are going to be get randomized over there. So the signal vector, signal X and signal Y are updated bidirectionally and their time traces are recorded in the matrices pattern X of K and Y of K. So bidirectional equilibrium is going to be checked by the variable flag over here which is the product of compare or compute x and compare x and compare y variables. So which are set of reset depending on whether the present signal vector are the same as the previous signal vectors of across Lx and Ly. Respectively, we have to check about this Lx and Ly value over them. If they are the same, then the flag is going to be set to 1 and the loop breaks. So note that if Note that if the representation which is going to be identified in such a way, the LX signal vector is going to be compared with the previous one after the first update cycle completes. So we are going to make the value of n is equal to 5, q is equal to 2, f of x p is equal to 4. Such a way we are going to maintain this values over here. And we are going to initialize the vector value as 0, 1, 0, 1. 1100 0, 0, 0. for the memory vector x and for memory vector y 100 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. such a way we are going to represent it over here. So such a way the program is going to be written in this pattern and we are going to simulate this one. Okay. So let me see about a worked example with this associations which we have been discussed over there as 0 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 1. So I am going to take the same value over here. We built upon our present understanding of this working of bidirectional associative memories with the following example. So although the encoding associations into this bidirectional associative memory is done using a bipolar outer product encoding. Uh, one usually have a choice of employing a binary as well as a bipolar encoding. As already we discussed over there, a bipolar encoding have its own advantages. So in this example, we are going to employ the bipolar encoding and decoding process. So we will reverse the vector symbol a comma b for binary vectors and x comma y for their binary e uh, bipolar equivalents. Okay. Consider the encoding associations into a bipolar outer product encoding BAMs as A1 is equal to 01010 transpose B1 is equal to 1001 transpose A2 is equal to 11000 transpose and B2 is equal to 0101 transpose. Such a way I am going to get the value. Let me discuss how actually this is going to be encoded. So the encoding the association and we are going to verify the stability. The outer product of individual associations heals a component weight matrix W1 and W2. So as we have expressed over there, the W1 and W2 is going to be get expressed over here, which is going to be taken a value and it's going to identify and it's going to make the matrix for W1 and matrix for W2. Okay. So from this, the final weight matrix W is equal to W1 plus W2, which is going to give this weight matrix. And a weight matrix transpose, which is going to be WT is going to be producing this for the way W and W2, which is going to produce the weight matrix over here. So Presenting this xi, the bipolar equation of ai to 
LX results in the following forward and reverse passes. So, this is going to be the forward and this is going to be the reverse. So, this establishes the Xi comma Yi or equivalently we can take Ei comma Bi as the bidirectional fixed point with the energy. So, this energy is going to be defined as E of Xi comma Yi is equal to minus 20. This is a value we are going to get it over there. Finally, we are going to take that this value is going to be minus 20. For the second association, for the second association, we can derive the same value as like that the reverse of the value which is going to be based on this particular parameters and the associations are going to be get recalled over there. So that no notice that how much both the encoded associations are going to be get stably fixed points of the system with the same energy depths. Okay. Such a way we are going to come to know about this, this value is going to be minus 20. Move on to the next one. Accuracy of recall based on Hamming distance. Accuracy of recall based on Hamming distance. The purpose of this example is to illustrate that the Hamming distance of the probe vector from a encoded associations increases beyond a limit. So, the memory associations being probed fails to get recalled often which is going to resulting in the retrievals of other spurious associations. So, first we are going to consider the probe vector x dash is equal to minus 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 1 transverse at a Hamming distance of 1 from xi. Then we are going to calculate the value of x dash transverse into weight matrix is going to deal 4 minus 4 minus 2 minus 2 tends to 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 which is nothing but y1 transpose y1 transpose so the hex 1 and y1 are association recalled so the reverse recording process cleans up the distortion and the association of x1 comma y1 is again recalled. So, next we are going to consider the probe vector x double dash is equal to minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1 transpose at a humming distance of 2, at a humming distance of 2 from x1 and 1 from x1 c. As in the case of the off-field network, the bipolar outer product encoding inadvertently the programs, the complements of this desired association. So, then the x double dash transpose into weight matrix becomes the value of 4 minus 4, 2 minus 2, which makes or tends to or which is going to signifies 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 as which is going to provide x1 c of transverse. So, here passing back through the weight transverse yields the x2 value and the association of x2 and y2 is going to be recalled as expected. So, the complement states are stable spurious attractors of this system that is going to be proven from this particular expression. Let me see about the stability analysis of BAM, stability analysis of bidirectional associative memory. So, if you are going to think about, if you are going to discuss about stability analysis, the next question that comes in our mind is, what can one say about the stability of such a system? Is there any guarantee that, do you have, is there any guarantee that the system is going to be always fall on a stable attractor? No, but a signal vector pair A comma B represents a state of BAM systems which recalls that in the auto associative case. So, we employ a quadratic function, we employ a quadratic function, a quadratic energy function to prove
improve the stability of this particular network. Okay. So, using a similar form of energy function, we are going to derive from the average sum of forward as well as reverse signal energies. So, which is going to be taken over there as E of A comma B, energy of A comma B, which is going to deal about that minus A dash transverse of weight matrix into the B. Notice that E of A comma B is equal to E of B comma A and when B is equal to A and E of A comma A is equal to minus of A transverse with W A that may be dealt as minus of A transverse and weight matrix into A which is the function which is the energy function assumed for the auto associative case. So, that we can say that the bidirectional associative memory stability theorem employs such an energy function to show that such a bidirectional associative memory is going to be stable. Let me discuss about the stability theorem, what the BAM stability theorem states. Any real connection matrix W any real connection matrix weight matrix W defines a BAM defines a bi bidirectional associative memory system that is bidirectionally stable that is bidirectionally stable. Let me see about the proof for it. We show that the energy decreases along discrete along the discrete uh, uh, strategic in the product state of space. This is shown by observing that any state change in the ith neuron of Lx or it may be in the jth neuron of Ly results in a decrease in the energy level. So that we can say that change in energy del of may be less than 0. Note that the value which is going to be summation which is going to be subset of 1 comma minus 1 comma plus 1. Since the neuron signals can change from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 without the loss of uh, generally uh, consider okay, that only the ith neuron in the fx changes state we can compute the energy of E of A comma B before and E k plus 1 of A comma B after the change which is going to happen over there. So, with that we are going to identify the value of E of A comma B as like this and after the change E k plus 1 of A comma B is going to be get change like this. This is going to be the energy function which is going to get present over there. Then this energy can be changed can be changed as del E is going to be given by proven that it may be less than 0, it may be less than 0. Okay. So, such a way we are going to prove that the value is going to be 0, where the product of the product of this del of a i with the k i is always positive to see that if the signal value is going to be 0 and the old signal value must be 1. Therefore, as a result of this, alternatively the value of x i, then the new value of signal value is going to be 1 and the old value of 0. Therefore, this a k, the del of a k is equal to 1. As a result of this, which once again, this value is going to be greater than 0. So, that the neuron would never change the state in the first place. Hence, the del of energy is equal to always lesser than that of 0 along with the particular energy bounded level. So, that the energy bounded level may be defined as as a powerful as that of the hop network. So, we are going to make that which is going to be 1 over n into hop field network of a i a j is approximately equal to that of b i comma b j. So, which is going to be comes from the particular data. Although, uh, the proof is going to be based on the change of state 
of only one neuron in LX. A simultaneous change of state of other neurons either in LX or LY can only cause the large energy changes and fastest to converge to the stable state. It is also possible to consider a more uh, general form of an energy value which can be uh, derived or which can be shown as a function, which can be shown as a function as like the data which is going to get present over here, which is going to deal about the particular function. So, which is going to provide about the error correction in BAMs. So, the error correction capability of a bipolar encoded BAM is a powerful as that of the half field network, but comes with the fundamental assumptions we have to. A function community or roughly speaking, if we have two associations of A1, comma B1, A2, comma B2, if A1 is closer to A2 in the domain space, uh, then uh, continuity implies that their association vectors B1 and B2 should be close in the range space. So, continuity must hold over the entire training set and can be stated in the quantitative terms. So, hence we are going to take the quantitative terms as like that we are going to mention over here and from that assume the BAM which encodes the Q associations using a bipolar outer product encoding and that the system is going to be uh, presented with one of the encoded domain vectors. So, AI binary vector presented to the systems are going to be converted to the binary form during encoding. Since encoding using a binary form, bipolar forms improves recall accuracy. Compositions of XI with the weight matrix which is going to yield about this particular data. This data consisting of a particular parameter called as coefficient is computed from the domain space. The coefficient is going to be computed from the domain space inner product, but applied to the range space inner product. Therefore, continuity must hold. Once again, we have an error correction procedure similar to that of the auto associative case, but no with an important difference. Okay. In the associative case, xi was associated with the xi and cor uh, correction coefficient with cik, which were generated using a Hamming distance based calculations between the xi and xk, and the correlation was applied to the vector x to the power of k. In this present case, what happened? The coefficients of cij are calculated using a Hamming distance between the domain space vector and now multiply the range space vector in the noise term in order to perform the correction. That means, we are using the Hamming distance structure is going to be preserved in the process of mapping from domain to range, domain space to range. Understand? So, move on to the correction coefficients. Notice that although the y i is amplified n times which may tend to provide a true copy of yi when threshold using the standard BAM neuron uh, function, neur neuron function, signal function. These signals are going to be distorted in the presence of noise. So, the correction coefficients attempts to cover or correct the noise terms as before. So, that we are going to get that one, the cik may be equal to or greater than or less than 0 if if the function which is going to be taken into consideration of this off field network value is also going to be greater than or equal to n by 2, greater than or equal to or less than n by 2. So, we use the coefficient estimated from domain space vectors to correct and improve the signal of range space vectors. In doing so, we imply assume that the distance structure is going to be present in the domain is going to be preserved in the range for only that can be apply a domain estimated c i j to correct a range vector y k. So, the coefficients are discussed with the weighted correctors that are used to transform the noise vector to more closely resemble signal vectors. So, the Coefficients are based on the Hamming distance between the xi and xk in the domain space and then multiplied into the yk 
with the assumption that the Hamming distance to dimensionally ratio is going to get preserved. Okay, this is why a continuity plays a very crucial role in the recall performance of the model. So, we can observe some of the uh, patterns, we have to observe some of the uh, patterns carefully that uh, one last word about the storage capacity. A noise sum component can outweigh a signal component of y if it exceeds n. That is if q is equal to greater than n. Conversely, we can say that in the reverse direction, the noise outweight, the noise outweight a signal if q is equal to greater than m, hence a very rough estimate of VAM storage capacity, which is going to be a minimum of, which is going to be a minimum of n comma m. That's the way it's going to be get present over there in the particular process. Move on to the next topic, memory structure, which is going to be get annihilation of memory, annihilation of structured maps in BAMs. In this section, we can briefly explain or review an important pathological case of the bidirectional associative memory model, where under certain mild conditions, the memory of all associates is going to be get lost. We begin with a few elementary defi uh, definitions and present only the main results over here. So, as we are going to come across over there, the structured set, centroids and structured maps. So, we can assume that the BAM's layers LX and LY have dimensions N and M respectively, that the vector applied to the layers LX and LY belonging to the particular parameter of binary decoding B to the power of N and B to the power of M or else the bipolar encoding or decoding, bipolar decoding of Xn and Xm respectively. It is interesting to note that if a1 and a2 are a two distinct vector in b to the power of n, if the vector can be equidistance from a1 and a2. So, we are going to see about some of the structured set. We can call a collection vector and we, are, we can say that the vector which are going to be equidistance from one another with h being the their uh, equidistance. So, an important pathological case under, centers, under certain conditions, a mild conditions, the memory of all associates is going to get lost. So, we are going to get a memory of encoded associations between sets of equidistance vectors are going to be called as structured maps and the number of such associations are going to be exceeded a lower bound. And coming to the continuous BAMs, as our earlier treatment of this bidirectional associative memory in the discrete time carries over to the continuous time case. We now assume that the neuron signal functions are sigmoidal. Each layer of neuron is going to be gone by an additive dynamic system of equa equation of the form which can be get shown over here as thus. So, which is going to be for i is equal to 1 to n, j is equal to 1 to m. But the forward connection matrix is going to be and weight matrix R, and the reverse connection matrix is going to be a transverse of weight matrix. So, here we can say that consequently we can say that the weight matrix of i j is equal to the weight matrix of j i, both are concurrent, both are going to be consequently same. So, the activations of neurons i in Lx and the activation of neurons j in Ly are exogenous inputs to the ith and jth neurons of this Lx and Ly. Such a way we are going to find the energy function. So, the dynamical system equations are a direction generalization of this half field system and in the continuous BAMs, the energy function takes the form over here. So, in, uh, in a special case of Cohen-Crossberg dynamics, 
in the operation of the model are assumed to change on a time scale ordered of a magnitude larger than that of the activations. For all the practical purpose, the variables can be, therefore, we can assume the constants over there so that the following energy function of the cohen crossberg theorem and the Lyapunova function of the continuous BAM system is going to be straightforward and we can derive the expression of energy of E comma energy of X comma Y is equal to summation of this value. Okay, so it's going to be yeah energy function which can be derived in the time derivative with a negative proves the stability. So we are going to take this a negative energy of x of y which is going to provide this particular expression which can be employed an additive ABM. So once again note that the signal E is bounded below and since the weight matrix is an arbitrary of n comma m matrix every matrix is going to be bidirectionally stable therefore which reaches a minimum of value so this proves the stability of the bam system so effectively therefore there are two kinds of dynamics activation dynamics and synaptic dynamics fast and slow a question then comes into our mind is if the neural network is going to be recurrent and its synapses keep changing in time, is there any chance of it ever becoming a stable? Yes, of course, the point is since the structure of the network attracted is going to be determined by its weights and the weights themselves keep changing. So then the structure of the attracts also keep changing over there. So the biological Possibility of this feedback supervised learning scheme such as a back propagation is questionable considering the fast that global error signal determines the changes in the synapses in the entire work. So a minimal unsupervised learning law which exploits locality of information in its design and is fundamentally to the theory of neural network is called Hebbian learning. And it, is, and it is derived from Hepp's postulate. So, which employs the Ebenian learning and which is going to observe the translation to the following rules. The first rule is nothing but the synaptic efficacy between the synaptic efficacy between the two simultaneously active neurons is selectively increased. It's going to be selectively increased and the second rule the synaptic efficacy between two asynchronous active neurons is selectively decreased which is going to be get selectively decreased that's the way it's going to be get shown over there let me see about the signal head law considering the two neutrons so two neurons i and j connectively by a weight of Wij as shown in the figure. Wij, neutron I and neutron J and which is going to have a signal function Sij of X and Si of X which are going to produce a signal product detects weight changes over here. So in mathematical form the sig -hep law neatly encapsulates both the ideas as the weight matrix which is going to deal about the function. This is going to be the function is going to be dealt over here and which has a solution that it is going to provide the particular solution in such a way. So move on to the help learning generates the outer product. What is the outer product encoding as asymptotic Hebbian learning? It is interesting to see that if the neuron signals are bipolar this learning law asymptotically converges to the bipolar outer product learning scheme to see this note if the signal function of alpha of signal i neuron and j neuron are going to be a subset of minus 1 comma 
1 then the thing if it's going to be si is equal to sj is equal to 1 or si is equal to sj is equal to minus 1 then we are going to get the weight matrix which is going to be dealt as this value or else if the data is going to be tends to 1 and the time tends to infinite similarly what happen if s is equal to 1 sj is equal to 1 or s is i is equal to minus 1 and sj is equal to plus 1 then the weight matrix tends to minus 1 and the time tends to infinite. <coughs> so this clearly states that the asymptotic encoding of a signal HEPS law generates a component weight which is none another than the signal propagation of SI and SJ or the outer product of the generates. So clearly we are going to come to know about that which means the neuron I and J are simultaneously active or inactive. The synaptic strength of the connection which is going to be WIJ increases and if the neuron remains in such a state of synchronization for a very long period of a time where time t tends to infinite then the WIJ tends to 1 that is the way we take the outer product of a signal pattern. Move on to the next topic. <coughs> Incorporating the signal Hebbian learning into a BAM signals. If we admit a signal Hebbian learning scheme into a BAM dynamics, the system of equations are going to be considered as x, y, and z. So, and the global bounded Lyapunawa energy function, which is going to deal about this parameters as E of energy of x comma y comma w is equal to energy of x comma y plus half of summation of i to j then the weight matter square is going to be there where E of x comma y was defined in the above equation it is now straightforward to observe that the particular data which is going to be showing the information of this particular thing. So, it is easy to show that the time derivative is going to be negative and the adaptive BAM settles down into a stable configuration which is going to be called as an adaptive resonance. Hence, every Hebbian BAM is going to be globally stable and we say it is adaptively resonant. The input association creates a stable reverberations across the nodes during which time synapses slowly learn and gradually cause out the energy minima in a network state place where minus 1 comma 1 and minus 1 comma 1 of power m this process continues till or until the learning process is going to be get stabilized. Move on to the last topic of this module number 4 attractor neural network applications a pattern association. We extend the pattern that we encoded in an associative f-fold network for a encoding of encoding into a BAM instead of having a single pattern representing a plane, a tank and a helicopter. Now we have considered or associations are going to be shown in the figure as plane, tank and helicopter as 1, 2, 3. The patterns of layer fx and are defined as 12 cross 12 pa uh, pixels grid patterns for f of y which is going to be taken 12 cross 10 pixel grid. As in the case of auto associated simulations these patterns were converted into bipolar vector form 1 for white pixels and minus 1 for black pixel. So the weight matrix of this BAM system was generated using a bipolar outer pockets outer product uh, encoding binary decoding was employed for this simulation. So this figure shows a plane tank and helicopter and moving on to the next one a three pair of patterns that were encoded into 144 cross 120 BAM system has been 
shown we have seen in the above. Now we are going to see about this screenshot snapshots of the BAM system simulation which is going to be consisting of a presentation of a 40 percent disastered plane, 40 percent disastered distorted plane over here ok. So, distorted FX is going to be there, a randomized FX of it is going to be there. At the first iteration how it is going to be, at the second iteration how it is going to be, at the third iteration how it is going to be. So, f of x first iteration, f of x sec first iteration, f of x second iteration, f of x, f of y second iteration, f of x third iteration, f of y third iteration and moving on to the last one, the final association recall which is going to be f of x iteration in the 4 we have got the real picture which is going to be called as a plane and we got y f of y iteration is going to be 1 which have got the thing. So, this figure simulation snap, snapshots of a subsystem asynchronous updates of the system that encodes the three associations. So, the subset uh, size was assumed to be 50. So, the initial effects pattern was 40 percent distorted, uh, distorted images of the plane. So, f y neuron signals were randomized. So, the system settles to the steady state in the mere four iterations. So, where one iteration means one complete forward and reverse cycle of neuron later updates. So, the associated recall property of the system is going to be clearly demonstrated. So, we have studied a variety of important attractor neural network which comes under the class of additive neural neurodynamic system, neurodynamic system. These models are all special cases of the Cohen Grossberg dynamic system. So, the bidirectional memory also introduced us the Ebenian learning law. So, we developed the shunting dynamics model and study its progressive towards the adaptive reasoning theory. So, uh, let me conclude the module with a short summary. We have come across with associative memories which finds the origin in the HEPS postulate. As associative memories are going to find their origin in the HEPS postulate which broadly states that the coincidence activity of two neurons strengthen the connection between them. So, in the human brain how there is an evidence that uh, pyramidal cells in the hippocampus are involved in a form of a associative learning called long time potential potentiation. And the associative memories maps vectors in an input space to vector in an output space. As we are aware about that the simplest of all associative memories is the linear associative memory which encodes associations using outer product encoding and recalls vectors without restarting or to feedback. So, in a orthogonal linear associative memory recall is going to be perfect. The half field cam suffers from the problem of spurious attractors, yeah. With a dynamic or a symmetric connection matrix, self feedback is going to be not allowed into the origin version of this model. So, the half field model as a coherent cross Berg form and stability can be proved using a suitable Lyapunova function. And an important application of half field network is in content addressable, uh, addressable memory. So, the outer pocket or the outer product encode of fields are going to be guaranteed to fall to a fixed point if asynchronous planes or updates are going to be get employed. For synchronous updates the network settles down their entire to a fixed point or into a two steps of limit cycle. And the brain state in a box extends the linear associator. Yeah. The brain state of box extends the linear associator is similar to that of the half field network that in a associative uh, auto associative model with, with connection matrix computed using an outer product in a usual way. However, it stands apart from the other models. It is use a linear threshold signal function spuriously the BBS, BSB model as a coherent cross Berg form. And a noisy relative of this half field model which employs a stochastic neuron some of which can be hidden and is going to be called as Boltzmann machine. 
Yes, it has an advantage that it can escape from local minima since neurons makes downhill energy transition most of the time rather than always. In optimization technique called simulated annealing, stochastic neuron changes their states depending on probability that is going to be computed from the energy change that results from the neuron flipping its signal. So this probability is a function of pseudo temperature. Simultaneous annealing gradually reduces the temperature to the system making the transition from lower to higher energy states uh, with a less probable with the reduction in temperature. So Boltzmann uh, machine allows the Boltzmann le uh, learning allows the network model probability distribution using a procedure. Learning allows the procedure that is based on the correlation. Extension of this particular uh, off-field network to a two-layer architecture results in the bidirectional associative memory. So the system always settled to a bidirectional equilibrium from any real value connection matrix. So the outer product bidirectional associative memories have an error correction capability and it is based on the continuity assumptions. So the model suffers from the problem of complement states as well the other spurious attractors. So adaptive bidirectional associative memories employ signal Hebbian learning. Yes, the resulted system can be down to show that stability by modifying the Lyapunova function suitably. Hope that this video is going to be helpful for you to understand about the model number 4, Attractor Neural Network. Thank you. Thanks a lot.